So as you will know, I recently traded in all my Olympus MFT gear, well, almost all of it, and went over to the dark side by purchasing the new Fuji X-T5. Now this move, or the reason for this move, seemed to upset a few people, as for them, I was, or should have been, an Olympus user for life. Why would I want anything else? The move for me, as I mentioned in my last video, was more about ergonomics than anything else. There were things on the Olympus cameras that I would have liked changed, things that didn't suit me anymore, and the X-T5 offered the features that I now wanted. These included a flip-up screen, a better viewfinder, full weather sealing on both the camera and lenses, and to a certain extent, updated electronics. Cameras these days are just computers after all, and computers age. We upgrade our computers after time, even though they were perfect when we bought them. And cameras are not much different in that respect. New processors mean faster and more efficient operation. Faster autofocus, for instance. My Pen Fs, my favorite Olympus cameras, were also starting to play up. The button assigned for back button focusing, which happened to be a front one on these models, never always worked. One body was bought second hand and one was bought brand new. But sometimes neither model would focus at all when pressing the designated focus button. And that annoyed me. And I don't think it was necessarily a fault that could be repaired. I'm not certain of the future of Olympus either under their new owners. And in the last few years, their outlook seems to be more aimed at wildlife and fast moving subjects photography. No new lenses or interesting features waiting in that scope there for me then. So my move was more of a personal one. The video I made about my move was explaining my reason. And I think people took it the wrong way as in I was telling them why they should switch too, which wasn't the case. I was ready to do a switch. It was something I'd been contemplating for a few years and it took that long and a new release from Fuji to make me do that. And I am pleased with my switch so far. I'm loving this camera. It works for me, but at the same time, I wouldn't recommend this camera. And I'll explain why. So a project that I've started doing recently is photographing churches. I seem to pass many old churches on my travels and if I have some spare time on my hands, I often go and visit one. Back in the day when I was shooting for stock libraries and magazines, I would often photograph churches as they could make a good calendar image too. And in fact, I did a few articles for magazines about cathedrals as well. I wrote the features and traveled around the country photographing some of the best. This new project, however, isn't about photographing these churches as such, the exteriors, nor is it about photographing the inside. Well, it is in a way, but this time it's the details inside that I'm concentrating on. Abstracts and intimate views on the inside of churches. Often these views are about the light, the way the sun is casting its rays through the stained glass windows, the divine light, if you like, or just the soft light coming in through the main entrance door of the church. I rarely shoot the wide view down the nave then, you wouldn't even recognize the church, the individual church, from my captures. In fact, I haven't even made a note of which images are captured at which church, simply as these are abstract studies of the interiors, and the church that each one was captured in is irrelevant. My images are usually captured around 35mm to 50mm focal lengths, with the lens wide open for a shallow depth of field effect, and to allow me to shoot handheld in the often low light of these church interiors. This means shooting at slower shutter speeds, but this is also often combined with a high ISO setting too. So I need a capable camera to capture these results, a camera that can cope with these subjects and conditions and still produce quality results. So the new Fuji X-T5 is ideal. This camera with the Fujicron prime lenses makes this photography easy, except I haven't used this camera to capture these results none of the church interiors have been taken with this Fuji camera. No, instead, 90% of the images were either captured with the Ricoh GR3 or the Ricoh GR3X. These two cameras have been perfect for the project. They have the ideal focal lengths, a nice wide f2.8 maximum aperture, and the results at ISOs up to 3200 have been beautiful. 
They handle the low light conditions really well. So if I was to recommend any camera these days, it would be the Ricohs. And in a way, these cameras have replaced my Olympus Pen Fs. The new Fuji is larger than my Pen Fs, with a bigger grip. And the lenses, the Fuji lenses, are slightly bigger than the Olympus Primes too. So the Fuji is my main camera, my new system camera, my do-it-all mirrorless camera. But the Ricohs are my go-to when I want something small and light and compact. A little powerhouse that can slip into my pocket. And if you said to me that one day these cameras would be the only camera that I'd ever own, not a Leica, but instead a Ricoh Compact, well, I wouldn't think you were crazy. But I'm not here to promote the Ricoh cameras either. I've done a video on these before, but like I said, 90% of the images I captured those church interiors with were captured with the Ricohs. The other 10% were with my old Nikon FM2 film camera loaded with Ilford HP5 black and white film. Yes, even an old film camera has been good enough to shoot these moody interiors. So I love the new X-T5. I love the twin GR3 setup. I love the Nikon FM2, and I even love my Olympus EM1 Mark II that I still own, my camera for zoom lenses. All great cameras, and each one suits my own style of shooting in different ways. But I wouldn't recommend any of them over the other to you as a photographer. You have to find your own ideal camera. And the point here is, I bet the ideal camera for you, the camera that helped you improve your photography, costs nothing. It's completely free. Why spend out on a new ideal camera when it's the one you already own? You don't have to buy an X-T5 just because I have. You don't need to buy both Ricohs or even one of these cameras as they are quite expensive for compact cameras. You don't need to go retro and buy an old film camera either. And if you shoot Olympus like I used to and still do for some of my photography when I want a zoom setup, you don't need to change that either. If you want to take pictures similar to me, then you already have the camera to do that. If you do want to take better pictures, if you don't think you are good enough, don't blame the camera. Don't upgrade thinking you will then take better pictures. Don't think buying an X-T5 camera will mean you take pictures like me. I still take the same pictures with the Fuji as I did with my Olympus cameras. I just wanted a slightly different shooting experience, a different tool to use. So unless you can give yourself legitimate reasons why an upgrade or change to an X-T5 is what you need, then I wouldn't recommend it. If it does suit your needs, however, if it does offer features that you want from your perfect camera, and if you do have the money to upgrade, then do so. It's a great camera, and I would recommend it for that reason. Otherwise, spend your money elsewhere. Spend it on travel with the camera you already have. Spend it on some tuition to teach you how to get better pictures with the camera you have. Spend it on some photography ebooks that will inspire you and give you ideas on new things to photograph or new techniques to use. Some ebooks such as mine. So I have several ebooks for sale. A photographer's guide to urban landscape. This covers all the techniques I use for my city shoots. Behind the picture, where I explain the stories behind some of my favorite captures. The A to Z of improving your photography, featuring 26 inspirational ideas to kickstart your photography, and the Project Tuition eBook, which is the self-guided notes of my online photography course. Purchasing one or all of these eBooks will be money better spent than giving it to Fuji or whoever to only find out that you still take the same pictures as the camera you traded it in for. A camera won't change the images you capture. It just might make the experience of that nicer or a bit easier to do, but it won't change the picture itself. It won't improve your eye for a picture, the story of the capture. It won't change the creative technique used, the vision, the insight, the thought behind that picture. No camera manufacturer has that as a feature. Well, not yet anyway. So I can't recommend this or any of my cameras to you. You'll have to do what I did and just try one for yourself to see if it is the camera for you. And if Olympus ever do get round to making a Pen F Mark II, and that has all the features I've always wanted in that camera, then yeah, maybe I will switch back. But until then, 
I'm just going to enjoy taking pictures with this one. I'll see you next time.